And if you've got a Bible, uh, please do turn. We're going to be looking at Mark's Gospel as we look at generous love with our time and our talents. Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, and we're going to read from verse 14. Mark 1, verse 14. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for all that you're doing in us and through us. And we pray for more. We thank you that you were able to do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, The other day, I was looking through some old photographs. I don't know if you have that thing sometimes for me. uh, Old photos come up on my Facebook profile. And as I saw these old photos, I thought, where did the time go? When I think of myself, I don't have any gray hair. But occasionally, I find myself looking in the mirror, and I think, why is my dad looking back at me? It's a pretty scary moment. And as somebody once said, the days are long, but the years are short. Time is so precious. Time is the most valuable thing that you can spend. You can make more money, but you can't make more time. I think that's why the psalmist encourages us in Psalm 90 verse 12 that we are to number our days aright so that we might gain a heart of wisdom. And I think the crucial question, knowing that every day that is given to us is a gift from God, full of opportunity, full of potential, the key crucial question is how do we use the time that we've been given wisely? Of course, we can't always choose how we spend our time. We're all facing different circumstances. Uh, Many of us have limitations on our time, but managing our time and using it wisely is an essential skill. I don't know if there's any time management gurus out there in the business world. It's a really important thing for people to know what they do. And what strikes me about this passage in Mark's gospel is that Jesus emphasizes time. And he prioritizes his time through mission and evangelism. Mark tells us that Jesus uses his time wisely to proclaim the good news of God. Uh, The word evangelion that means uh, good news. That's the word from which we get our word evangelism. It's used 52 times in the New Testament. That's a weekly reminder that we as Christians, as the people of God, have good news to tell the world. Jesus is alive and there is hope in a world where there's so often so little hope and disillusionment. And in verse 15, we read that Jesus says, the time has come. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Jesus' priority was sharing the good news through words and actions. And it was urgent. The word immediately features 40 times in Mark's gospel. He puts a huge emphasis on Jesus taking the initiative, on Jesus being proactive towards mission. And this is a significant moment. Uh, It's like a transition moment in the ministry of Jesus. We read there at the start, after John was put in prison. You see, whilst John the Baptist was announcing the kingdom of God, Jesus could bide his time. But once John was put in prison, he knew that now the time had come. Just before midnight on April the 14th, 1912, the Titanic hit an iceberg, causing it to sink. 
sure many of you know that, uh, famous by Leonardo DiCaprio in the great film uh, out on the ship. And uh, it was devastating. There was a devastating loss of life. 1,517 lives were lost. But it could have been avoided. The tragedy was not due to an iceberg, but due to their complacency, their apathy, and the false sense of security that they had. We know now that the captain hadn't heeded the warnings. There were too few lifeboats on board, and they'd waited too long to evacuate the ship. They thought that the leak could be contained, but it couldn't. They were complacent. They were apathetic. They saw it as important, but they didn't see it as urgent. Mark's gospel conveys a sense of importance and urgency towards the mission of the kingdom of God. The time has come. You may know that there are two Greek words used or translated for time. One is uh, chronos, meaning simple sort of chronological time, and the other one is kairos, which means sort of like a decisive moment or a strategic opportunity. This part of Mark's gospel, we read that this is like a kairos moment for Jesus. It's a decisive moment. It's a moment of strategic opportunity. And up until this point, Jesus has been saying, my, my time hasn't yet come. You'll remember that when his mum says to him, look, you need to change a little bit of water into wine. He says, no, 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 my time hasn't come. But now his time had arrived. And we've been sensing for us as a church here, Emily and I have been part of the church now just for over three years here, that this is a, it's like a kairos moment for us, like a transition moment, a strategic opportunity. I think that's the case here, locally, what God is doing, but also nationally, the things that are happening in our society all around the world, but also what's happening in the Church of England. And what our society so desperately needs is the church alive and kicking and growing and multiplying and worshipping Jesus. Faithful people putting him first, standing up for truth and justice, loving one another, welcoming people in, serving and loving those around us. We have good news to share. We have a hope that goes beyond the grave. And that's what Jesus calls us into. So what do we see specifically from this passage? First, we see now is the time to encounter Jesus. These four disciples, Simon and Andrew and James and John, they all encountered Jesus for the very first time. And it changed everything. Verse 16 says, Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee. He saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus says. Jesus sees them where they're at, in their everyday, in their ordinary lives. And he calls them for a purpose. He calls them to follow him on mission. We are a family here, but we are a family on a mission. And this was like their Kairos moment as they encountered Jesus for the very first time. As I've said, our vision here is to see faith rise, the church rise, and the city rise. And our hope is that people would discover a relationship with Jesus for the very first time. They would deepen their faith in him. They would be equipped and empowered to serve him. And that we as a church together would resource, plant churches, but also bring transformation in our city. We are longing to be a healthy church. Big churches are not necessarily healthy churches. Small churches are not necessarily unhealthy churches. But actually healthy things grow. And healthy churches grow. And we want to see this church grow and multiply. It's a thrill to have Marcus Ottobiani as part of our team here. And certainly in the next sort of year, he's going to be looking to plant a church. We're in discussions with the diocese as to what does that look like multiplying out from here. 
And people encounter Jesus in so many different ways. But often that encounter starts with an invitation. Many of us are here tonight because somebody invited us, maybe onto to Alpha. Maybe we had some questions. Maybe we had some sort of issues that we were trying to work out with faith. And Alpha was a really helpful place for that. Maybe some people are invited to church. Maybe you're here tonight because somebody invited you to church. Actually, that's why we're doing our Easter giveaway. Yes, we want to just bless everyone and have fun and give away chocolate eggs. But actually, it's an invitation to come and hear the gospel, this good news, this Easter message that we have. We want to build even more that culture of invitation. So each one of us has a confidence to invite our friends and our family into this place. Those who have come in with curiosity. And we want this, therefore, to be a place that's, that's relevant to those who are in our local area. And we want to be creative and imaginative about that. What does that look like? How can we be innovative in the area, the diverse area that God has placed us in? And I just want to pick out one thing, particularly around a younger demographic. These statistics, 45% of people in this area, in the Wandsworth area, 350,000 people. 45% of people in this area are under the age of 29. 81% of people are under the age of 44. I'm in the minority around here. At the ripe old age of 48, I am in the 19% of this area, in this borough. So what does it mean for us to engage with a, a, a younger digital generation, many of whom have largely turned their back, not necessarily on God, not necessarily on faith or on Jesus, but have largely turned their back on the church? What does that mean for us? What is God saying to us during this time? And we want to be a place of authentic community where we can build relationships together, strong relationships. It was great having Lauren Windle speaking here last week on singleness. But we want our, our, our relationships to be strong in our friendships, in our families. It's amazing that the, the, the Parenting Teenagers course has just launched. In our, in our marriages, what does that look like? Uh, many of you and I play football, actually Marcus has played, and I know Ben's played, a few of us go out there, do our thing on Saturday mornings, as you can tell, look at these legs, uh, <laughs> yeah, you mock, I score a few goals, I have, you know, you know, but it was amazing, and w one of these people that I play football with, he's become a friend, and he got in touch with me, and he said, oh, I just wondered if we could meet for coffee, and I thought, oh, I wonder, I wonder what this is going to be about, and we met for coffee, and he said, look, I just want to chat to you, because I was looking at my wedding photos the other day, and I saw this photo, and I was there with all my groomsmen, and we had my bride, uh, like, sort of, she, we were holding her like this. And he said, I'm happily married for about 25 years. But he said, I realized that all my groomsmen were either separated or divorced. And he started to weep. And he just, it was like he was completely heartbroken in that moment. And he said, and, and I don't know what to do, and I don't know where to go. He said, but I spoke to my mum, and she's a Christian. And she said, I think the church does something for marriages. And so he said, is that true? Have you got anything for marriages? And so I began to talk to him about the pre-marriage course and the marriage course. And he looked at me, and he was just a little bit shocked with himself. But he said, wow, the church really does have some of the answers, doesn't it? I was like, yes, it does, yes. But people are looking for hope. People are looking for tools to build strong and healthy relationships. Uh, we had Wandsworth Mediation Service that had been a partnership with this church for many years. They were doing some stuff for our staff. You know, just amazing tools for reconciliation, for healing relationships that they had. Uh, all of this within the context of this church. When people encounter his church... They encounter Jesus. In our services, as we worship together, as we pray, as we read his word together, as we minister to one another, we sense the presence of God in this place. You know, it was Moses in Exodus 33, he says, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't send us. 
What will distinguish us from everybody else on the face of the earth? And do you know what? All of this activity, everything that we're doing, in a way, it, it, it pales into insignificance if we don't have the presence of Jesus here in us and working and moving through us. We want to be a people who get closer to Jesus, who become more like him. Take time to spend time with Jesus. A moment with Jesus is a moment well spent. Of course, we can do that ourselves privately. I really want to encourage you. I guess as your pastor, you know, read, read the Bible. It's a good thing. <laughs> get into good habits. Get into good patterns of reading his word. Maybe just, you know, go old school and get a book and a highlighter. Or maybe if you prefer, you know, get an app on your phone, Lectio 365 or the Bible Project or um, Nikki and Pippa's Bible in one year. Whatever it is, spend some time in the Word. Pray. Wherever you are, speak to Him. Go deeper with Him in your faith. And let's go deeper together with one another in our relationships. That's why it's so important for us to gather together. I, I think it's amazing what God is doing here. God's really building and growing something, particularly at this five o'clock service. And I love seeing all of you, but I don't love seeing empty chairs. And I actually think that God is calling people to this place. So many people just come into this church, just kind of off the streets. Emily and I used to say that people never would just go, oh, I think I'll go to church today. But they are. We've been meeting people in this church over the last few months, and we've been hearing it from our friends who lead other churches. People are just turning up to church, looking for hope, looking for good news, looking for a place where they can be loved and have some of their questions answered. Hebrews 10, 25 says, Don't give up meeting together, as some of you are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. One of the things that came out of our congregational listen survey that we've been doing over this month, and if you haven't done that yet, the link is still open on the website, but really is just the amazing sense of, of welcome, of community, of fellowship here in this church. And I, and I want to thank you all for that. You are all making a difference in the way that you welcome others in. But that's why our groups are so important. If you're not in a group, mate, I encourage you to get in a group. It's a great way to sort of grow friendships, to grow spiritually as well. But also to emphasize our kids and our youth groups. If you're here predominantly at the 5 o'clock service, you may not know this, but in our morning service, we have about 75 children who gather together in groups all over in that side of the building. And we really need your help. You know, all of the parents in this church, pretty much, they have stepped up massively over the last weeks and months. We have been in sort of an interim space with our kids' pastor, and so many of the parents have rolled their sleeves up, they've got involved. But you know, when you're a parent and you're looking after your kids, and then you're coming to their kids' groups and you're looking after them as well, sometimes what they need is some people who aren't parents to invest in this next generation that God is raising up. Maybe you're here tonight and you could help in some small way. Maybe with our kids. Maybe with our youth. You know, again, you might see a, a few youth here at the 5 o'clock. There's about 20 youth who all fly down in the morning service. Ollie's doing that youth weekend in a few weeks' time. And I'm going to be in trouble with the bishop if nobody goes and helps Ollie at the youth weekend away. You know, I'm going to be done for safeguarding. And so we're all the church. Those young people are not just Ollie's responsibility. They're not just mine and Emily's responsibility. They're all our responsibility to raise them up so they might follow Jesus as well. So that's the first thing. Let's make space to encounter Jesus. The second thing we see in this passage is now is the time to respond to Jesus' call. Jesus calls them. It says, without delay... And at once they left their nets and they followed him. They chose to get involved. I find it really inspiring. It's, it's actually extraordinary to see what they were willing to let go of to get involved in Jesus' mission. Poor Zebedee, their father, is left in the boat. They leave their family, their livelihood, their comfort, their security. They didn't know where this journey was going to lead. But they just took that next step 
to respond to Jesus. And in different ways, we're called to do exactly the same. What does that look like for us on, on Monday morning when Jesus says, come follow me? Wherever you are, in your place of work, in your school, college, or uni, or in your family, or in your home. These guys were fishermen. Jesus says, come follow me. I, I, I'll make you fish for people. But he could have just as easily said uh, sort of to builders, come follow me and you'll build my kingdom. He could have said to doctors, come follow me, follow me and you will bring healing to this world. He could have said to parents, come follow me and you'll nurture new life. What are the gifts, the abilities, the talents that you have that he's saying, come follow me. Use what I'm giving you to build my kingdom. And if you're unsure what those talents, those capabilities, those giftings are, ask other people. What, just say to your friend, what, what do you think God's given me? Where do you see that I flourish and I can make a difference? Maybe experiment a little bit. If you don't know where to start, the church is a great place to start. There's so many different places and opportunities uh, to serve. Production team, worship. Uh, uh, ben, ben isn't trying to make the band really small at the five o'clock. Okay, there's often a keyboard here and, you know, you might see some of these musicians who are playing quite a lot. But actually, are there others amongst us who God might be raising up to get involved? Maybe serving at the food bank, the spear, uh, maybe with the women's drop-in, maybe helping with groups, whatever it might be, there are so many different opportunities, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit later on. None of us are God's gift. None of us are God's gift, but we have all received God's gifts to make a difference in his church. 1 Peter 4, verses 10 to 11 says this, and this is in the context. He's speaking here to the church community. He says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If you speak, you should do it as those who speak the very words of God. If you serve, you should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and power forever and ever. I know some of you are involved in all these different areas already, and you are making a huge difference. And some of you would like to be more involved. You don't want to be on the bench, as it were. You want to be on the pitch. You want to be playing. You want to get involved in the game. And we would love you to do that. We would love to invite you to do that, to get involved, giving your time, giving your talents to build the kingdom of God here in this place. And again, the congregational survey was so encouraging to us because it showed us that there were more people serving in this church than is the average case in most churches. Normally, it's 20% of the people doing 80% of the stuff. Actually, it's far higher in this church, and we are hugely, hugely grateful to you. I just want to introduce you to two or three people who are involved serving in different ways. And I could have pulled out loads of different people. Uh, but perhaps um, Leah and Devon, why don't you just come and just... Chris Payne as well. Is Chris still here? I haven't given him any warning, but just, um, just pop up here. Who else? Would I be? Yeah, let's give these guys a round of applause. Devon, just say, uh, where, where are you serving? On which team? How long have you been part of this church? And why did you decide to give your time in that way? Cool, thank you. Um, yeah, so um, I w have been on the hospitality team a few times at Sunday services and currently serving on the Alpha team as well, which is brilliant. And I think for me, we came to church about nine months ago, me and Fraz, and we just felt so loved and so welcomed the very first time we came. So if I can help somebody else have that experience, I want to do it. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, oh, you look familiar. Uh, this is my son, Jesse. Complete legend. Sorry, Devon. I don't want to stand in your way. Um, Jesse, what team are you on? Uh, I'm on the production team on the camera. Fantastic. Why did you decide to get involved doing that? Um, so Ben Hayes, who was leading worship, actually asked me to um, give it a go. And I thought, why not learn a new skill? Um, and I come to the five normally. So I know that when I'm here, I can engage more when I can see like, pictures on the screen. Um, 
And if I've ever done a live stream, which is like quite a fun responsibility, I know that um, sort of like for a Christmas service, I know that I can help other people who can't be here physically to also engage. So yeah, it's a good feeling to help others engage. Um, and it also, it's also nice to know that I can give back to the church for, for all it's done for me. So yeah. Fantastic. How old are you, Jesse? Uh, 18. 18. Amazing. We're so grateful. Thank you. Leah, which team are you on? Uh, I'm on visuals on production. Next slide. That's me. <laughs> and do, do you have a, a, a qualification in visuals? No. no. No, surprisingly. Thanks, though. Um, no, but I just, one Sunday, Ben was like, I think he ran from leading worship to the desk, and I was like, oh my gosh, they definitely need more people. And I thought, I could probably do that, and gave it a go, and it was doable. So, yeah. And you're involved in a few other areas as well. Just say about those midweek. Yeah, so women's drop-in on, like, Thursday mornings. Again, it was like, oh, I do have some Thursday mornings free, so I could just go and help out with that, and that's great. And then there was something... Oh, yeah, and then also doing, like, socials and starting to get involved with that again. It was just, yeah, I could do that. I could take that on and, yeah, filling the role. Thank you, Leah. Thank you so much. Chris, zero warning for this. Uh, how long have you been coming to this church? Uh, I, well, I was held as a little baby on stage, so um, about 31, 32 years ago. So, yeah, a while now. <laughs> Amazing. And you, you, you've obviously done lots of things over the years. You've also received lots of people who've got involved and invested in you over the years. That probably means that's the reason why you're still here now. But just say some of the areas that you're involved in, because you're also on a couple of boards and uh, doing things at quite a high level. So just say about that. High level, wow. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I, well, m um, my wife and I, um, we run a home group here um, on a Tuesday night, which is great. Um, a few guys, um, I think, here are in that. Um, I do um, a men's ministry, which we do twice a term um, on a Wednesday early morning. Um, so if you're in interested in that, um, come chat to me. We're always looking to get more Im involved there. Um, in the JCT, so the Junction Community Trust, I'm a trustee on that, so it kind of oversees, I guess, Wandsworth Food Bank and Spear, so that's, um, yeah, incredible ministries if you don't know those. And, uh, yeah, and then on hosting teams, so just always trying to be a friendly face when people come into church, so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's just an encouragement. I mean, you feel so much more at home when you're, when you're part of the furniture, um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's just good fun. I mean, there's so many amazing people in this church, and you're going to get to know them better by getting stuck in. So, yeah, it's all good. Amazing. Can we thank these guys? Thanks for all you're doing. Thank you so much uh, for sharing. As I say, I could have got so many p p people up here, but uh, just a little snapshot. So we want to encounter Jesus, respond to his call, and finally follow wherever he leads. Uh, verse 18 of this little section of Mark's gospel says, at once they left their nets and followed him. These disciples, they, they took a step. They just made a decision to go on this adventure, this journey of faith with Jesus. They just gave their ordinary every day and God made it something extraordinary. And I'm always just so inspired to think that Peter, one of these disciples, Jesus said, this is the rock on which I'm going to build the whole church. We are here because he decided to step out in that moment and follow Jesus, just taking that step. And what is God calling us to today? Giving our time generously, giving our talents generously. I finished with this quote from Mother Teresa. She says, yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has yet to come. We have only today. Let us begin. Let's encounter Jesus. Let's respond to him. Let's follow him wherever he leads. And when we do that together, we will see this vision materialize, seeing faith rise, the church rise, and the city rise. In Jesus' name, amen.